Nobody travels by ship anymore. Everybody traveling with a motor car and an aeroplane. Modern Western civilization gave these things to the world. And as it transforms mankind through its scientific and technological revolution, it embraces you and makes you dependent and keeps you within its godless embrace. Modern Western civilization speaks about God but is really godless. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّ بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ says Allah. And amongst mankind there are those who say we believe in Allah and in the last day but Allah says no. <laughs> they are godless. I want to suggest to you that modern Western civilization has emerged in history by divine planning. It didn't happen by accident. And it has come into the world as a divine plan to test. To see who are those who will remain faithful to Allah and to follow Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam regardless of the price they have to pay. And who are those who will willingly allow themselves to enter into that godless embrace? But we have to proceed with the lecture. Modern Western civilization is not only mysterious in its origin, but also there seems to be within West modern Western civilization an inner core, a group of hijackers. You know you hijack a okay, aircraft. So this small group within modern Western civilization do the hijacking. And this small group within modern Western civilization is a Judeo-Christian group. Namely, some Jews and some Christians reconcile. They used to be enemies. And they reconcile. Ba'aduhum awliya'u ba'd, says Allah in the Quran. Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 49, sometimes it's mentioned as 51. In that you'll find the answer to that secret group within modern Western civilization. Pursuing a particular agenda. And they're very easy to recognize. It's the Jewish Christian Zionist Alliance. Controlling the US Congress today. They have an obsession with the Holy Land. While modern Western civilization in its totality is vehemently secular and believes that religion belongs to the museums, this small group within Western civilization has an obsession with the Holy Land. These are the ones who succeeded through the First World War, which they instigated, incidentally, in the summer of 1914, the assassination of the Grand Duke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo, which caused the First World War to be launched, who succeeded through the First World War in liberating, meaning from their perspective, not ours, liberating the Holy Land. When the British Army defeated the Ottoman Islamic army and General Allenby entered into Jerusalem and declared today the Crusades have ended. Hmm? It is this core within Western civilization 
which then brought the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. It is this core within Western civilization which then caused the birth of the state of Israel in the Holy Land in 1948. It is this core, the Zionist Jewish Christian alliance within Western civilization which is now demolishing the US dollar and the US economy. It is this Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance which is responsible, not the majority of the American people, for American troops being in Afghanistan and in Iraq and poised now to attack Pakistan. And it is this shadowy group within modern Western civilization who planned and executed 9-11 and then put the blame on innocent Muslims. I have written a book, I don't have, here, here it is, An Islamic View of Gog and Magog in the Modern World. Gog and Magog are in the Quran. And so you better study the subject of Gog and Magog, Ya'juj and Ma'juj. And they are one of the signs of the last day. And I have located Gog and Magog in that alliance. This alliance wants Israel to rule the world. So that the Messiah can come and declare from Jerusalem, I am the Messiah which will then validate the Jewish claim to truth. But in order for Israel to rule the world, the Arabs will have to submit to Israel. And so we now have what you call the Arab Spring. It's going to turn out to be a very bloody spring. Because Israel is going to exploit the Arab Spring tomorrow to say that Islam is now re-emerging in the world and Islam poses a threat to Israel and to mankind and we have to save the world from Islam so Israel can launch a pre-planned wars against the Arabs to decimate the Arabs and to force the submission of the Arab world to Israel it is for this reason that Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam uttered those prophetic words. You may have heard of them when he woke up from his sleep and his face was flushed red. Hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. But nobody talks about these hadiths. And he said, Wailul lil Arab min sharrin qadik taraba. Woe unto the Arabs because of a great evil which is now approaching. Mm -hmm. But for that you've got to read this book on Gog and Magog. In order for Israel to rule the world, Israel must not only force the submission of the Arab world around it to Israel, but more than that, much more than that. Israel will have to force Russia to bend its knee. And Israel will have to force China to bend her knee. Israel is not to force the Muslim world, the leaders, the governments, because they're all bending, knees, they're bending their knees. Any, anytime you ask them to bend their knees, they bend their knees. I don't want to say anything more than that. You're very intelligent people. Can Israel force Russia to bend her knee? Will Russia bend her knee? Can Israel force China? I'm not talking about the Chinese in Singapore. Eh? They're polishing the shoes. They call that little Israel out there. If ever a people have made a fatal mistake in foreign policy, it is that little island of Israel. And they're listening to my lectures out there in Israel, in, in little Israel. They made a fatal mistake in foreign policy. And now the chickens are coming home to roost for, his, for, for Singapore. No need to speak any more on that. 
Russia will not bend 